it's going to go down as an historic day for aviation. These are the first steps on an inspiring journey to ensure air travel becomes more environmentally sustainable. A little over a year ago, Boeing, Rolls-Royce, Air New Zealand and UOP set out to prove that second generation biofuels could be a reality for commercial air travel within five years. On December 3, 2008, the inspiring work that's seen them bring together their individual skills and knowledge will be realised in the skies above New Zealand. It's quite appropriate that one of the most clean and green nations on earth plays host to this historic event that we hope will be a defining moment toward a more environmentally sustainable future for air travel. One of the biggest challenges that uh, commercial aviation has is to reduce its uh, environmental impact, particularly on climate change. And so sustainable aviation fuels are one of the key areas that we can use to reduce our climate change impact. Well, the Air New Zealand biofuel test flight is really about innovation and technology leadership. They've been a wonderful partner to work with, together with Rolls-Royce and UOP we've been able to find a source that can potentially help aviation improve its environmental performance, reduce its carbon emissions, and really find a way to diversify its fuel portfolio going forward. Global aviation is uniquely positioned to pioneer sustainable biofuels. Compared to hundreds of millions of cars worldwide and the vast infrastructure serving them, commercial aviation is comprised of fewer than 20,000 aircraft and only a few hundred airport fueling stations. Commercial aviation's smaller scale and less complex infrastructure puts it in a position to make big changes that make a real difference to the global environment and local economies. It's unlikely the demand for alternative fuels will be met by a single source, making a portfolio of solutions the best approach. After extensive research, Jotropha Kirkus has been identified as having the most immediate potential. Jotropha is a plant that grows to approximately three meters high and produces seed that contain inedible lipid oil that is used to produce fuel. Each seed produces between 30 and 40% of its mass in oil and Jotropha can be grown in a range of difficult conditions, including arid and non-arable areas. The test flight partners were non-negotiable about the hurdles any potential second generation fuel source had to meet. Firstly, it's got to be commercially viable. Secondly, it's clearly got to meet a technical specification to support the flight. And thirdly, it has to meet a social criteria. This is particularly important to Air New Zealand and to New Zealanders. By social criteria, what I mean is a fuel stock that in no way is going to be affecting the environment in the long term going forward. We can't be using a fuel that in any way displaces rainforests or other food crops. It's for that reason that we've selected Jotropha as the fuel of choice for this test flight. The test flight partners engaged Terrasol Energy to independently source the Jotropha for the flight from areas and growers who met their stringent criteria. In preparation for the Air New Zealand flight, we really looked long and hard for uh, sustainable sources of Jotropha, and we looked in uh, India as well as in Africa, and that led us here to Tanzania. Well, Diligent Tanzania is producing Jotropha oil, but in a sustainable way. We have outgrowers or contract farmers. They are the ones who grow the crop for us. They plant it as a fence or as intercropping, so they never stop uh, with any food production they, uh, they are currently producing already. We give them the initial seeds, we give them training. When the trees are mature, it produces um, seeds. The seeds we buy and we transport it back here to Arusha to process it in our factory. Here in this village Likamba, for next year, maybe us, we can get the other income from the Yatrofa. So we are so happy to plant this Yatrofa. One more criteria we are also taking on board is the one where you don't accept any loss of biodiversity. So our farmers are not allowed actually to cut any trees. We always uh, tell them it's, it's yeah, not good to, uh, to cut any tree. They should continue with food production, so there's also no loss of biodiversity there. Jotropha is really an additional thing for them. Another benefit of Jotropha is that it can produce more than just liquid fuels. 
The byproducts are again, of course, a sustainable uh, source of energy. Uh, we have several options. One is biogas. We have a big digester uh, to produce gas from the seed cake. We also make briquettes and we also make charcoal. So one of those options, all of them are sustainable, but we sell it um, within Arusha locally. All the Jatropha oil sourced from the various countries for the test flight was refined by UOP in the United States using state-of-the-art technology. The UOP process takes the bio-oils uh, and converts them from an oxygenate, which has very low energy value, uh, to a completely oxygen-free molecule that then must be isomerized so that it has sufficiently low freeze point so that it won't uh, freeze up in a jet plane. Once the Jotropha oil was refined into fuel, samples were sent to Rolls-Royce in the United Kingdom for extensive testing. The selection criteria for any alternative fuel in particular the Air New Zealand Jotropha, is its suitability, sustainability and industrial capability. We have to make sure that the fuel is fit for purpose, so we've subjected it to a rigorous test regime to make sure that it meets our exacting technical standards. Now that we're satisfied that the fuel is indeed fit for purpose, Rolls-Royce fuel specialists and gas turbine specialists have provided formal approval for the fuel to be used in the flight. The fuel is a 50-50 blend of the Jotropha derived material and standard Jet A1. Once blended in this way, the fuel is a drop-in. That means that the fuel is virtually indistinguishable from standard Jet A1. The Jotropha fuel arrived in New Zealand a few weeks prior to the test flight for blending and storage in a tanker supplied by the Royal New Zealand Air Force. Preparations for the test flight itself have been underway for several months, with the pilots regularly practicing in a Boeing 747 flight simulator all the tests they will perform during the historic flight. Air New Zealand's Captain Morgan explains. The test flight will be conducted using a Boeing 747-400, which will have one engine operating on the Jotropha jet fuel blend. We'll be doing a number of normal and non-normal procedures during the course of the flight. After full thrust takeoff, we'll climb to 35,000 feet, and after a period of time, shut the engine down and then restart it. We'll then also conduct a number of acceleration tests. A little later on, we'll descend to a medium altitude and repeat all of those tests again. After that, we'll descend to a low altitude and carry out a simulated go-around or mist approach to confirm that all engines are operating normally prior to landing. After a normal landing, we'll then select full reverse thrust to confirm that all engines are operating normally in that mode, and then taxi in and shut down. We'll then immediately start the Jotropha pad engine to confirm that it's operating normally on the ground after the flight. Following the flight, the engine will be examined carefully to look how the fuel was performed and see if any impact on the engine has occurred due to the use of this fuel. The test will provide essential data that, as part of the evaluation and approval of this type of fuel. Once we have all reviewed the scientific data, which we anticipate will be positive given the Jotropha fuel is virtually indistinguishable from Jet A1, we will meet and decide on the next steps for gaining formal certification for use as a fuel on the global aviation stage. We are only at the beginning of a long journey, but it is one that we are hopeful will herald a step change a new era for our industry. Air New Zealand has been a wonderful partner to work with in terms of developing uh, alternative fuel sources for aviation. They've really demonstrated a position of leadership by uh, helping us search the world for plant matter that could be used to make this flight a possibility. A key to airlines being able to play their role in environmental responsibility will be the support of governments. Public policy at all levels local, state, national, international, is going to be an important part of the process of uh, developing the actual fuels themselves uh, and the infrastructures to produce and distribute them. By working together at all levels, airlines, aircraft and engine manufacturers, refiners and government can create a more sustainable future today for tomorrow.